Hello, fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a number theory problem here. So find all the positive integers a and b such that a factorial plus 3 is equal to b squared. I invite you to try this problem out for a minimum of uh, 5 minutes, ideally 15 to 20 minutes, not more than 40 minutes. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, try out this problem. You'll come up with a couple of solutions, put your first ideas out on paper for the next five minutes. And now without further ado, let's begin. So with this problem, what we have is a factorial plus 3 is b squared. So let's write down the first couple of factorials. So we have for a, a factorial, and a factorial plus 3. Let's see sort of what is it that happens. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We get 1, 2, 6, 24. Uh, 70, 24 times 5. Oh no, that's 120. 120, and with that we have the first couple of these written down. Now what is a factorial plus 3? Here we have 1 plus 3 is 4, it's a square, 2 plus 3 is 5, not a square, 6 plus 3 is 9. A square again, 24 plus 3 is 27, not a square, and 120 is 123, not a square. So. Now, we, now we found a couple of solutions, and if we look at 6, we'll get 120 times 6, that is what? 600 plus 120, that's 720, and then 723, is that a square? No, it's not a square. Now, the question for you is, why would you, why do I, for example, I saw this number, and I didn't need to check its factorization to determine that it's not a square. Uh, this number, I... Like, I didn't really check it, but I can really do the same thing I've done here. And here's the place where I would invite you to pause for the next 5 to 10 minutes and see, are there any squares greater than or equal to, for a greater than or equal to 6? Is any one of these, a factorial plus 3, going to equal a square? And here's where I invite you to pause. And here's the answer. So... Mind you, what are, what are we getting when it, we have a factorial greater than or equal to 5? We get that the last digit is always going to be 0. Why? a factorial greater than or equal to 5 is going to be divisible by 10. Why? It's divisible by 2 and 5. Why? Because if a factorial is greater than or equal to 6, it is 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So we have 2 times 5, i.e. it's divisible by 10. And then that number plus 3 gives us a number, number that's ending in a 3. And we can check all the squares and see that no square number ends in a, in a 3. And we can do this by looking at remainders when a number is divided by 10. Alternatively, and I'll do this altering thing because it's simpler, is check modulo 5. Check the remainders when a square, a, yeah, x squared is divided by 5. So we have x, x squared, Modulo 5, we can have 0, 1. Actually, when you're looking at squares, you can look at 4 as negative 1. It's the same really thing, same reminder, remainder of, not remainder of negative 1, but really modulo arithmetic works like in terms of x or n minus x when you're looking at modulo n. So we have plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, x squared is going to be 0, 1, and minus 1, or 4. So in every single one of these cases, x squared, a square can only give remainders of 1 or negative 1 when divided by a um, divided by 5, right? So given this, if a factorial, if a is greater than or equal to 5, that implies that a factorial is divisible by 5, which implies that a factorial plus 3 is congruent to 3 modulo 5. And now this here, right here, implies that a factorial plus 3 is not b squared. For b, that's a positive integer. And this finishes up the problem in one way. And here what we've done is we notice, oh wait, the squares are not going to appear modulo, three, modulo 5. And so we are done. Now, this is one way of solving the problem, and I want to show you a different way also, which is a factorial plus 3. This is meant to be a square. What does it mean that a number is a square? Well, it means that if 
for any prime that's dividing this thing, it's a prime to the even power that divides this number. Which number divides a factorial plus 3 if a is greater than or equal to 6? Like definitely, even greater than or equal to 3. Which number is definitely dividing this one? I, I invite you to take two minutes, just think about it. Which number is definitely dividing a factorial plus 3? And the answer is 3. Because if, if a is greater than or equal to 3, then 3 divides a factorial, and so 3 divides a factorial plus 3. Now, this means if 3 divides a factorial plus 3, and if this is a perfect square, which number also needs to divide a factorial plus 3? Take two minutes and figure that out. And here's the thing. If 3 divides it, because if this is a square, we will have that. That implies that 9 needs to divide a factorial plus 3. However, I invite you to pause for two, 2 to 5 minutes and try to reach a contradiction for a greater than or equal to 6. Show that this is impossible for a greater than or equal to 6. Pause now. And here's the idea. The idea is if a is greater than or equal to 6, then we have 3 divides 1 times 2 times 3, and 3 divides 4 times 5 times 6. There's a 6, there's a 3. So in their product, so it means that 9 divides 6 factorial, which divides a factorial for a greater than or equal to 6. And now if 9 divides this, and 9 divides this, that would imply that 9 divides 3, which is absurd. This is not true. So we are left with only one option, which is that 9 doesn't divide this, but 3 does. And so it cannot be a square. So that is how we get rid of the cases a is greater than or equal to 6. Now, a question you might have is, why, didn't, why did we look at a? Why didn't, did we not look at b? And the, yeah, that's a very, very, very good question. And I think for me, it's one thing, it's a technique that I've saw in problems. So I saw the solution in other types of factorial problems where you usually deal with the factorial as opposed to the other things. Usually because uh, you don't really know as much about how factorials interact. You can figure out what their prime divisors are. And other than that, you don't really, really have a lot. So that is why you look at the factorial as opposed to the square. So if you have any ideas like why you would, I'm thinking now as to my motivations for looking at the factorial as opposed to the square. And I'm thinking it's just nicer because I know the difference between two factorials in terms of, like factorials multiply. You know, the difference between seven factorial and eight factorial is seven, is seven factorial times eight. So I can have a much better time dealing with the factors, especially the prime factors of this, as opposed to analyzing different squares. You know, the difference between two squared and three squared is five. I mean, you have two K plus one, sure, but that's a difference of sum. I can't really multiply one to get to the other. And it's better like that I have like these factors here that I'm dealing with because I need them to end up being a square. So that is why I would say I would look at this through the factorials first and foremost. And it's a kind of sort of little thing, like there's these two, little, two ways to do it. One, by looking at some interesting module that solves your problem. And the other way being through looking at divisibility. What needs to divide what? And this finishes up our problem, and as always, thanks for problem solving.